Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Natasha, AKA Wellness Diva Chronicles Keto, and I'm back with another recipe, one that's highly requested by you guys. I'll share the ingredients and the recipe for all the items in the dish in the description box below. It would have gotten a little bit lengthy because it's essentially three recipes. I whipped up an easy and delicious base with the crab meat and the shrimp and used it within both the chaffle and to make the crab cakes. My shrimp are frozen so I did have to thaw them out but if you get them raw and fresh you can of course skip this thawing step. I ended up adding 3 ounces of white shrimp with the tail removed to the bowl to thaw. I'll go ahead and strain my shrimp once thawed and do the same thing to my crab meat once I take it out of the can because there is a considerable amount of moisture and water in there. We just want to drain that out. We want our patties to be relatively dry. I then go ahead and drizzle the seafood with a little bit of buttery coconut oil just to help with the marination process. I then went ahead and started seasoning the seafood with a little bit of Redmond sea salt, some black pepper, some onion powder, some Mexican oregano, and of course you know we gotta stir it all together and keep combining it. I kept adding things as I went. I had smoked paprika, a bunch of things. But you'll see, I'll keep combining it to make sure it's all equally seasoned. Perfect. I then let the seafood mixture marinate for 45 minutes. I chopped up an assortment of bell peppers in my food processor that I plan to add to the chaffles and also into the crab and shrimp cakes. I want to go ahead and add the crab and shrimp seafood mixture into the food processor and give that a little pulse just to make it chunky. I don't want the bits too big but I don't want to have it like a puree either. I then go ahead and saute about a tablespoon of white onion in some Kerrygold butter. I'm going to go ahead and make the base that I'm going to add to the chocolate. I want to saute that shrimp and crab and onion and pepper and everything before I toss it into the batter and make the chocolates. Feel free to add a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, or other seasonings at this stage. Layer in the flavor at every chance you get. Add the seafood mixture to the pan with the onions and peppers sauteing in Kerrygold butter. And then I went ahead and stir fried like all that together, mix it together, and added another dollop of Kerrygold mix it together again and let all those flavors come together. Honestly, you guys could stop right here and have a delicious meal. I had to hold myself back from eating this after I just taste tested it to see if the flavors were all right. They were all right, all right. There was almost no seafood in the chaffle. Okay, now onto the chaffle. I soften one ounce of cream cheese in the microwave. Let that cool for a bit. And then I'm going to add one egg, a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, a sprinkling of garlic, probably about a quarter teaspoon, half teaspoon, some onion powder, nutritional yeast. I then add a teaspoon of the white onions as well as the mixed bell peppers to the mix for the chocolates and get that all combined. I added 
in about an eighth of a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. That's probably about a tablespoon and a half or so. I then add the sautéed seafood mix to the egg batter for the chaffles. By the way, I split the seafood mixture about 40-60, leaving the majority for the seafood cakes and less for the chaffles. I'm definitely gonna lay some mozzarella cheese down on the griddle to get the chaffle started, but I also add about a quarter cup to the batter. I then added in a half of a tablespoon of almond flour to the mix. Just to give it a little bit more sturdiness and integrity, I don't quite trust it with only cheese and eggs, but that's just me. I chopped up about two tablespoons of halloumi frying cheese in the food processor. I love this cheese. It adds that nice extra saltiness to the chaffle. I'm gonna test and compare when I get my Dash waffle maker in a couple of days and see if the brownness is the same with this halloumi cheese in that unit. Whether it's this unit that's browning it fast or if it's, I don't know. We'll see. It really does come out nicely though because those crunchy pieces are really delicious and then the pieces that are less done, it's a nice compliment. Really, I'm just curious to see the difference. I go back in after a couple minutes of cooking the chaffles and layer in some more seafood mixture, some halloumi cheese, some mozzarella cheese, close it back down and let it cook for a few more. I think I got a little carried away here with the portions because the house smelled so good at this point. Just fill in the waffle trays about three quarters of the way to make sure it doesn't overflow like it did for me here. Now it's time to whip up a basic dry dredge that'll act as the coating of the seafood cakes. This will help to make the outer crust even lighter and more delicious and crunchy. Some shredded Parmesan cheese, a little nutritional yeast, some garlic powder, onion powder. A sprinkling of oregano. I'm gonna go ahead and add some peely nuts to the mix. They are so delicious, buttery and salty. They have Himalayan sea salt and coconut oil on them and they're actually sprouted nuts, so they're super nutritious. I was running out of pork rinds, but I added what I had left to the mixture too to add to the texture and crunch. I then minced the dry dredge for the outer coating of the cakes in the food processor. So add a quarter cup of egg whites to the seafood mixture to help hold the cakes together. Add about a tablespoon and a half of the dry dredge to the shrimp and crab mixture. It'll help with the binding. I added about a teaspoon of coconut flour to the crab and shrimp mixture for the cakes because I want it to absorb some of the excess moisture that's in there. I then set up my little dredging station. I have one part that's just purely coconut flour with a little salt. And I'll have egg whites in the middle for the wash and then I'll have the dry dredge that we just made and put together. So I go ahead and eyeball it and work to get equal parts and divide up the seafood mixture. So I'll have even sized patties and roll them out. And then they all get a dip in the dredging station. First coconut flour, then egg white wash, then dry dredge for the coating. 
I like to use a good cast iron Dutch pan for frying because the heat is more even and I get it to about 340 degrees. I didn't use a thermometer. I used my grandmother's flick test and it came out perfectly. The oil was right where I needed it to be to get a crisp, crunchy outside with a tender inside. Repeat the breading and frying process until all your shrimp and crab cakes are done. I cooked the cakes for about 30 seconds on each side. I could see when the edges of the cake started to get a little bit golden brown, that's when I flipped them. Then fry on the other side for about another 30 seconds and remove it with a slatted spoon. Now on to making the decadent hollandaise sauce. It's so easy to make, you'll want to make it every week so that you can have it for weekends, weekdays, to put on eggs, crab cakes, whatever you like. It's delicious. I'm going to start the hollandaise sauce by separating the yolks of two eggs from the whites and setting them aside in a medium bowl. I definitely go out of my way to use pasture raised and organic eggs in recipes like this where there's not a cooking process to the eggs. They're not even tempered. So you really do want to get the best quality eggs you can get your hands on. Whisk the eggs for a few minutes until they get lighter yellow in color and they start to thicken a bit and get a little bit frothy. I then melted one stick or half a cup of Vital Farms butter and set that aside. Pour out and set aside one teaspoon of lemon juice. Start slowly adding in the melted butter into the egg mix while whisking. Keep whisking continuously. This part is important. Just go one teaspoon at a time. Keep whisking in. Just be patient. Once you start to see it emulsify a bit like this, you can then start alternating putting in butter and lemon juice, butter and lemon juice until you're done with both. At this stage, you can add a little sea salt to the hollandaise sauce. I then continue to incorporate the melted butter and lemon juice into the egg mix all while whisking. You'll definitely run out of lemon juice before you run out of butter, so once you do run out of the lemon juice, just continue to slowly add in that melted butter until everything is done and the entire mix is emulsified and you've got a beautiful hollandaise sauce. Then for the final part of this dish, I'm going to go ahead and poach an egg. I filled a small pan with water about three quarter of the way full. Another thing I do to help the egg form a little pod, almost like a cocoon around the yolk, is just to give the water a little bit of a swirl to create almost like a vortex. Plus you'll also want to add some white vinegar to the simmering water before you submerge your egg for poaching. This will be another level of insurance to make sure the egg holds together and creates like a little pod and a little cocoon just for your poached egg. Once cooked to about a soft poach, I'll remove the poached egg from the heated water and from the fire so that it'll stop cooking.
Now we're ready to build our dish. I go ahead and grab one of those tasty shrimp and crab chaffles and set it down. Then I top the chaffle with a crispy yet tender delicious crab and shrimp cake. Next I top my crab cake with a gently poached egg. I then take this already scrumptious dish to the next level by drowning it in hollandaise sauce. Lastly, for flavor and a little garnish, I add a bit of fresh chopped chives atop the entire dish. Feel free to enjoy the chaffle, the shrimp and crab cake, or the poached egg by themselves or together. And hollandaise sauce is great for so many different recipes. I hope you get a lot of value out of this video here and that you make and enjoy this delicious recipe. Also, please like, share, subscribe, and comment if you do enjoy the videos. It really does help the channel so I can bring you more recipes just like this one.